good. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Woo, it just keeps getting gooder and gooder. Amen. I say gooder. You say and. Gooder. Gooder. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is head over heels in love with you. Hallelujah. Love you, Elder Lance. <laughs> um, so we got a surprise tonight. Tonight is a Testimony Thursday. Let's give God praise. Are y'all excited about Testimony Thursday? Are y'all excited about Testimony Wednesday? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> yeah, it's been a hard glory to God he got us. Amen? Um, but, we <laughs> but we do have Testimony Thursday coming up tomorrow too. Praise God. Um, thank you, Lord. It's so good to laugh. Amen? So I'm not, I'm not going to waste, uh, waste your time. Um, what I do want to show you real quick, for those of you who have not attended a testimony Wednesday, is this. When you start, when you, start, when you grab the mic and you start, the time is going to start um, going. Uh, let me turn on my little clicker. Hey, Sister Faith, praise God. Let's give Sister Faith a round of applause. We love you, girl. <laughs> love her so much, praise God. Uh, for those of you who don't know what's going on back there, that's the young adults, and um, they are on fire, amen. We got the youth going on, on upstairs, so please keep them in prayer. We're going to open up here in a, prayer, in a prayer in a minute. But I just wanted to show you real quick. You grab the mic and you start talking. This is what starts to play, right? I'm going to mute it so there's no distractions. Hear my heart, family. The reason why we do this is because, unfortunately, for someone who's not really familiar with Holy Spirit's church, there's an order. Amen. God's order is he gives us five minutes. Can you say it with me five minutes? Five minutes. Amen. We don't need another preacher because I'm him. Okay. <laughs> we don't need another. Can I get an amen? amen? Yeah. So we don't need you up here for an hour and a half like me because I'll get upset because I do that. Right. Just five minutes. Amen. But this is the cool thing. You, you start doing your thing. You don't have to take the whole five minutes. You could be like Brother David Simpson and uh, give your credit over to somebody else. Right. Um, but it's still five minute maximum for everybody. Um, the reason why these two chairs are here, whoever wants to go next sits right here and then sits right here. Unless you're Sarge. The last time we did this, Sarge just purposely, right? But the next person up is here. So if you come and you sit here and leave this open, who's going to go next? Whoever sits here, right? Right? So maybe you want to just come up and you're not ready and you want to just... Huh? Be a little fancy? <laughs> huh? Be a little fancy? Just sit right there? Right? And then when you're, when you're ready, move over. Are we good? Are we good? So I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to start preaching. I'm going to open up in prayer. If I open my eyes and nobody's sitting there, we're gonna, I'm going to keep on just flowing in the Holy Spirit and how Holy Spirit wants to flow. Amen? But I'm going to wait on you. Praise God. Are we good? Let's all stand up on our feet. Let's um, open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for Lord Jesus Christ, for eternity, Father. It's beyond us, Father God, and how much you love us. Father God, I thank you to say this right now, that you are holy. You are holy, Father. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your holiness and your order and your love through Christ our Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you came here to show us the Father's love for us and not judge us, not condemn us, but just show us how much you love us. And you took it all on that cross. You yielded up your spirit. And you demonstrated your perfect love when that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that that veil is no longer. That your spirit now lives in every believer of yours, Father. Every beloved child. Holy Spirit, I call on you. I only welcome you. This is your holy house. These are your holy people. Unified in your body, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you in your holy and precious name that your glorious light through your Holy Spirit would shine through every beloved child of yours here that's presently in the physical and those that are listening online, Father God, that you would bless them because, Father God, we don't limit you, Father. We don't limit you. We just want you to be who you are, Daddy, Father, God Almighty. So, Father God, I thank you that you have anointed all these that are coming, Father God, to share your glory in this testimony. 
And I thank you above all, Father God, that you are coming back for us soon. Hallelujah. That you are coming back for us soon, Father. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ, and the only way we know how is to listen, to obey, to speak, to pray in your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Give somebody a high five. Praise God. It's always good to see somebody. Hallelujah. It feels so good. Yeah, you finally got it. It feels so good. Good. You ready? Whenever you're ready. Well, my name is Aaron Coulter, and I'm recovered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I always get the sneak peek upstairs because me and Pastor, we're always a part of the tech team. I always get the sneak peek to see what's going on. And when he told me that this was going on tonight and the Holy Spirit spoke through him and said that I would have something to say, I sat up there and I really thought to myself, I was like, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say? I've already done it once. If you want to see on YouTube, there you go. I've done it once. What else do you have me to say? And I really got to talk to the Holy Spirit, and he said, every day is a testimony. Every day you, you walk with me is a testimony. It's not just when you're saved, that story that is that way, dead and gone, you and where you are now. It's every day you walk with me after that. A lot of you know what I've done. A lot of you have seen some of the stuff. I know parents, uncle, you've seen it. Trust me. There's been plenty of times you've seen it. <laughs> but as the days go forward with Holy Spirit guiding my every step, I notice that everything gets gooder and gooder and gooder Amen. and gooder and gooder. And it just keeps going. So when I sit here and say that your testimony doesn't stop on that day, it doesn't. You just sit there and you listen to Holy Spirit. And I, went, I asked him if I could share this because I shared it with Pastor. I haven't shared it with anybody else. But a lot of you know my job. I work at Five Star. Yay. <laughs> Best job. <laughs> well, in the cooler section where all the drinks are stored, somebody's got to go back there and stock it. That's my job on a daily basis sometimes. And when I go back there, I usually put my headphones in and I listen to music and worship God that way and talk to him. Well, I forgot my headphones the other day. So there was no music. I was in complete silence. And I got to seriously sit there and talk to Holy Spirit. I will kid you not, for a second, the doors were open on the other side, but I was standing still and I could not see anything in front of me. Holy Spirit gave me a vision like I've never seen before. I was standing at the throne. I couldn't see Jesus, I couldn't see Holy Spirit, I couldn't see God. I could just see that throne and I could reach out and touch it. It was so real to me that I didn't even know that people were opening the doors and literally looking at me and just I couldn't see them. And I confess that to you because in that intimate moment with Holy Spirit, it was just so unreal because I sat there and I told Holy Spirit, I know out of the 22 years I've been alive, I know I haven't always been the best son. I know I haven't done everything that you've wanted me to do that you wanted me to do in this life. But every single day I live for you is another day that I realize you love me enough to say, I got you. I'm going to drag you whatever pit you are in, I'm going to drag you right out of. And I'm going to bless you every day as long as you just worship me and have this kind of relationship with me. And I'll tell you what, it, it's cold in them coolers. It is freezing in there to where you have to wear two jackets. And I was sitting there bawling and the tears weren't even sticking to my face. Because I was such in that intimate moment. So, 
in this testimony here, if you don't feel Holy Spirit and if you want to feel him for the first time, trust me, there's nothing better than to come to Christ right here at this altar. <laughs> you got family right here ready to pray for you and everything. Even Facebook, we'll pray for you right now. I don't care. <laughs> it, it's just that intimate moment you get with him that you know, I got you. You're okay. And every day after that is a testimony to him. And that's all I got. Have you ever wondered as far as how testimony is spelled? You ever wondered this? It says test emony, right? But then look at the way it's spelled, right? Test I'm on. Why? Test I'm on. Why? Say it with me. Test I'm on. Test I'm on. Why? why? One more time. Test I'm on. Why? You see, a testimony is purely that. A test I'm on. Why? For his glory. Amen. Amen. Oh, my gosh. We went over these rules. Seriously. Come on now. You're sitting in the seat that comes up. Don't, don't you start with me, Sherry. Seriously. I, I, you've been so disruptive this past week. I'm telling you right now. Okay, oh, I was testing. Um, first of all, um, the Lord brought me from the pits of hell. That is where I lived, was the pits of hell. Uh, to praise him, because that's what I want to do. Um, he has uh, taken so much from me, but what he has gave me in return of what he took from me is awesome awesome <laughs> um, I have Jesus in my house I love Jesus uh, I live for Jesus uh, I speak for Jesus I, I see for Jesus I, I, everything is, is Jesus um, today he put on my heart to take my neighbor to lunch didn't understand it but I've done it because I got to obey have to obey. I took my late neighbor to lunch. She was telling me a lot of problems she was having. Um, there was these two women that were sitting next to us while we was eating. One of them seen my shirt. She spoke on my shirt. Uh, they was listening to me talk to my neighbor that I took to church and they, the first they was kind of looking at me you know so the Lord's like explain don't let them get the wrong idea so I explained that she did not have the opportunity that most of us had to learn how to read and write uh, she's been signing stuff that she didn't know what she was signing and she was putting it on my heart and the Lord was telling me to help her with this stuff so I explained it to these women um, we all sat there we talked we testified we praised the Lord uh, I mean for an hour and it was just awesome when we got done um, and this was totally out of totally out of me um, they asked you know well I was getting ready to say, can we pray? But they got to it first. One of them says, uh, can we pray with you all before we leave? Yes, 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 no hesitation. Um, and before we left, we uh, stood up, held hands, and prayed right in the middle of the restaurant. Um, we could feel people looking at us, you know, and that, but it didn't matter. It did not matter because we was praising the Lord. We was thanking him for everything that he'd done for us. And uh, by the time we got finished, though, and left, the people that was looking at us kind of funny, they was all smiling and just, and just looking up. So, uh, and then after that, um, 
Sister Kay had texted text me earlier today or texted me earlier, uh, asked me to come and help her. So um, I came and helped her do some painting upstairs. We got to talk. Uh, we got some things out that was on our minds. We got to hug. We got to praise the Lord. And, and, and the Lord is awesome. He is just awesome. That's, I, I, that's, I, that's all I can say. He's awesome. <laughs> Love him. Hello, my name is Lisa Coter, and I've recovered through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. I know I did my testimony last Thursday, but it's just got gooder and gooder. God has done so much since I opened up with my testimony last week. I don't have a fear anymore. I testify for the Lord. I live for the Lord daily, and I pray daily, and I worship him daily. I die daily in him. He has given me so many opportunities now to talk to people. He's opened up so many doors. Craig and our relationship, our relationship is on fire. We pray morning, we pray night, we pray whenever we, we know each other's hurting or have something on our mind. Holy Spirit just focuses together. And emojis to each other. It's just amazing what God does when you just open up and obey him. But testifying. If you are scared to plant that little seed and testify to somebody. See, pastor, use these. Because I had an opportunity today for a guy that an incident happened at work. He was down. And I knew I really couldn't talk to him. But I put my name on it. And he calls me Mama C. And I put Mom on it. And then I wrote a sticky note. And I told him, not only do I love you, but God loves you. And that whatever you do, don't get down on yourself. Because he's a forgiving and loving God. And no matter what people think or what people say, it don't matter. God's got you. I stuck it under his keyboard, and I watched a smile come across his face, the only one that he had given that day after what had happened this morning. I used one while ago in Walmart to a girl that I didn't even know, but Elena knew her, and come to find out she's part of Elena's family. But I spoke out and gave it to her because she told me that her and her husband had gotten saved and they're looking for a church. These can be your seed if you're scared. Just lay it on somebody's desk, write your name on it. That's all you got to do. It's got all the information. And trust me, Holy Spirit will take it from there. But he has been giving me visions and dreams. And I've talked to the pastors about them. And I'm not lying. Some of them have been scary. This latest one has, but no more, because I want Holy Spirit to show me what he has for me, and if I, if it will lead one person to him for his glory, then use me any way you want. You ready? Okay. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Well, I actually just got here because, yeah, but besides the point. <laughs> Anyways, so obviously you guys obviously see that I am alone whenever I do come to church, and that's okay, but this past year has been a very long journey for me, and I'm very ashamed of the things that I have allowed to happen in my life as far as who I chose to marry before God and in here with our church family. Um, so, 
gym was in a really, really bad place for like five years of our relationship. And he decided to take a path down a road of selling drugs to people. And I mean, we gave a lot of money to here to this church and a lot of that was drug money. And I'm very ashamed to admit that. Um, but whenever I went on my Emmaus walk, I really meant, meant it whenever I left there that that was, you know, if it wasn't for that Emmaus walk, I don't know if I'd ever set foot back in here. But I did. And then my brother died, and my mom struggles every day. Me and Jim had a really rough path over that, and I begged him, and I begged, and I pleaded for him to stop, and he wouldn't. And then my, waking up and finding my brother dead in my kitchen floor, it kind of scared him, I think. And so we moved to Indiana, obviously, and things just got rough. Um, I never knew what you meant whenever you talked about religious people, but whenever I walked into that church, it was full of nothing but religious people. They wanted me to dress like them and act like them and dress my kids like them. And, you know, we weren't allowed to watch TV. I couldn't be on my phone. I couldn't call my parents. And it just got overwhelming. So I, we left for work at 6 a.m. And I packed my bags and my kids' bags and I left. And I haven't looked back and I'm not going back. You know, if that, and like I told him, if that is not the God that I serve. You know, if that's the God that you want to serve, you do that. And of course, you know, obviously we're not divorced yet. And I don't know if, when I'll file, whatever. But he said he's not signing it. He doesn't believe in divorce. But why do you want to stay married to somebody if you want to control them? You know, he was my husband and he took advantage of me in our bedroom, in our private intimacy place. You know, you don't do that to somebody you love. And that's not of God. You know, you don't take advantage of your wife. And I'm here and I'm struggling. And a lot of people know that. And it's not easy for me. You know, and sometimes I feel like I fail my kids. But... Two, I had to learn the hard way. Two happy homes are better than one toxic. You know, my kids are sick right now, and he doesn't even call or check on them. And I'm just, I'm, well, I'm standing before you guys, obviously, to ask that you pray for me because I'm struggling. I'm not here as much as I'd like to be, but I had to get a job that I work 12 hours by myself. I take care of my kids by myself, and I'm doing it. But this is my home, and this is where I feel God, and this is where I want to be. Leadership, I'm going to ask you to come and anoint her in oil. And Sister Amanda, if you would, can you come up here and anoint her in oil? And Thank you. And please, in the name of Jesus, reach out to our beloved sister. This isn't just for show on Facebook. We can care less. We're God's family, and she knows that this is family, and We'll do whatever, even if it's watching your kids or whatever. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm a horrible babysitter, but <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I, I got I to gotta be honest before we pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, we lift up your beloved daughter, and only you know, Father God, what she's going through and everything, Father, that she's battling through. But we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that in your holy and mighty name, all because of your blood that covers us, that Holy Spirit, you have shined the light in her and through her, that she is covered by your blood, Heavenly Father, and that you have protected her. Father, she wants to worship you with all of her heart, soul, mind, and strength. I know, Father God, that she loves you, and you are number one in her life, Father God. We are family, eternal family. And Father God, I just thank you right now for this season, that you show your glory. And Father God, we also lift up Brother Jim to you as well, Father God. We pray for him. We pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would touch him, and, and that, Father God, that above all, that, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are blessed and glorified. So, Father, thank you for positioning all your angels around them. Thank you, Father God, for watching over her beloved children. And, Father God, thank you for reminding her, and I love this, Father God, thank you for reminding her, and you just showed this to her today, that there's a great party in heaven when that trumpet sounds, and we all go and meet you up in the sky, and she... She has babies up there waiting for her father. 
So, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you that you love us no matter what we go through, that you are what your beloved daughter just testified about. You're a good and perfect father, that you love us the way we are. We don't have to dress like nobody. We don't have to like act like nobody. We don't have to sound like nobody. You love us just the way we are, Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you prove that. It's in your holy, mighty name. And, Father God, remind your beloved daughter that we are one family. And, Father, silence the enemy, silence con condemnation, silence guilt and shame. We cast you out right now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot speak to Sister Carrie. You have no voice. You are muted. And, Father, that she only hears your voice of love, encouragement, of power, of might, of, of, of your love, Father God, that's flooding her, Father God. And that she's always reminded that she's not alone, Father. That, Holy Spirit, this is your holy temple. And that, Father, as one body, we are here for her, Father. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you. And above all, to lay hands over your beloved child. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. Is there anybody? Uh, is there anybody else? That's a tough one to follow, right there. My name is Tim, and I am recovered by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. Whew. Wasn't that powerful? Yes. Everybody, please keep our sister lifted up this week as we go forth. Let's pray her through this, because God's got it. Yes. God's going to bring her through it. Amen. Amen. I can't say enough about our Lord Jesus Christ. He has done everything for us. But yet, we need to do more for him. I don't know that we can ever do enough for him. But we need to do all we, that we can. For all those that was not here last night, for all those on Facebook that wasn't listening last night, y'all need to listen to I Am Recovered last night. The testimonies last night were awesome and godly led. There was a lot of good word put out there last night. So please go back and re-listen to it if you didn't hear it. Amen. I just want to thank our Heavenly Father tonight for allowing us to step back up, my beloved wife and myself as deacons of the church. Woo, hallelujah. And part of the testimonies last night, and I, I, I kind of done it for a reason. I brought a question up on my brothers that was sitting at the table last night on what difference has God made in their marriages. And I say marriages because I myself have been there multiple times, embarrassed to say, but, but, but God. You know, you, you kind of need to practice what you preach. And I did a lot of preaching on it. And then I finally got it right. 
You have to have God in your marriage from the start. You can't, you know, you can't let a lot of things get in there and get way down the road and, and then try to get there because there's a, there's a whole lot in your past that is hard to forget and be forgiven for. But either way, but I can guarantee you and tell you if you allow God in from the start, keep him in the foremost because God comes first. Amen. We come second. Our, our spouses are second. God has to come first. Amen. And amen, I'm telling you, it. Joey's been going on with the gooder and gooder for many, many years now. And believe it or not, it does. It keeps just getting gooder and gooder. So just keep him, just keep God first, you second, keep your spouses lifted up, tell them every day what they mean to you, Lord. Let them know your actions, should she, they'll speak louder than anything. That's all you have to do is let your actions speak, Lord. That's all I got. Thank you. My name is Dave Riggs. I'm covered by precious blood of Jesus Christ. Um, this one might be an actual testimony from my behalf. Um, things I've done in the past, not always proud of, but I've done quite a few things that a lot of people may not know. When I was a kid, a young kid, I would, uh, well, I mean, I threw spitball at a teacher. I picked up the desk and threw it at her. I I, like I said, I was plenty bad. I got caught urinating outside in the playground because I was bad. And I, in the every day in grade school, I got in fights. Not with just one, but the whole class, all the boys, they always want to fight me, so I fought them. Um, maybe it was because I had a speech impediment. They wanted to make fun of me, so I fought them. No big deal. But that was just part of it. Even when I got in high school, or middle school, I kept on fighting. And then I got to where I was enjoying it because I was inflicting pain upon people. And it actually was feeling good to inflict pain. I know it's bad, but that's also the reason why I play football. Because if I play football in high school, that's the only time I ever could play sports because mom and dad was always drunk, couldn't take me nowhere. So the only time I could do it was when I got in high school, got my own car. But I played football in high school, and I had a mindset, if I hurt them on the football field, I cannot, they cannot, um, I'm not held liable for it. So when they told me I was going against the number one offense, the number one defense, I intended to hurt them. And many times I did. Whether I done a low cut on them or whatever it may be, I wanted to hurt them. And I did. Even when I joined the, even before I joined the Army, there was a uh, small business here in Lebanon. Me and one of my, I won't say cousins, um, took a grocery cart and we demolished the building. It was a small business, but we demolished the building. That was bad, I know. I felt bad about doing that. I actually took $1,000 out of my pocket and I took it and threw it inside the building. And my cousin, he put about $300 in it. We probably paid for the building at the time, but that was neither here nor there. We did not answer to it. They might have known who does it, don't know. But anyway, I, I did pay the $1,000 out of my own pocket because I was feeling guilty on that. Um, when I was in the Army, of course, I got deployed multiple times. But when I was, we went to different places to go training. And a bunch of us went out on the weekend, 
and there was probably about 12 of us went to this town, and the town probably had 100 people, all guys in it, and they said, well, we want to fight y'all. You can't even take care of me, much less all of four, the rest of us 12 guys. I was cocky, arrogant, vain, egotistical, whatever you want to use. But I said, well, how about the first 12 of y'all take me on, and I'll, I'll take care of y'all, and if you can beat me up, then maybe the guys will take care of the rest of you. They would have jumped on me because I, I was quite willing to fight them. But anyway, maybe I'm cocky and vain at the time, but maybe I was just plumb stupid. But, um, I mean, there's been a lot of other things I've done. Like, I could always, I had a very bad habit of lying to someone. I told one of my friends in high school that I had a car that ran on water. And I hadn't even believed it because I was just sitting and looked right in his face lying to him. I said, oh, yeah, it just runs on nothing but water. Yeah, water and leg power maybe. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's kind of things i done. And one of my, another one of my friends, he was a confused young man, we'll say. They all tied him up to a chain, and chained him to a tree in nothing but his underwear. And I didn't do it personally, but I felt bad for him. And I sit there next to him in the tr- on the ground. And uh, we sit there probably, he would sit there for three hours in his underwear. Finally, I plopped the chain, broke him, I got him right off. And it was just regular chain, it was dog chain. Got an inch thick, but I got the chain off of him. I broke it and got him off. And so that was some of the things that I'd done growing up. But since I found the Lord, I don't feel comfortable lying. I don't feel comfortable fighting. I don't feel comfortable um, doing nothing. All I want now is to love the Lord and to please the Lord. And the Lord's first, and my beloved wife is second. And there was time that she was a second. She was probably third, fourth down the line. That was the time I put my kids first, which you just can't do that. But I wasn't in in what I wasn't in love with the Lord. I was in love with myself. So, um, but yeah, now it's she's second, and I'm very proud of that part to say it. So, and my time's up. So, thank you. First of all, Sarge, you know, brother, you know, I love you so much. I was scared to death of you when I first came here, though. (laughs) I was going through a season. And I wasn't supposed to be in Marion County. And the first person I looked around behind me and saw was you in your uniform. <laughs> and you had all the cuffs and everything with you. I was like, oh, no, they done sent him. And I know he's going to take me out of here. <laughs> he right behind me. But I love you, brother. I'm so proud of you. Amen. So proud of you. Amen. And your beloved wife. Uh, my testimony, man. I've been through a season that drug me down. I didn't know which way to turn, but Holy Spirit did. He turned me here. I didn't know what love was until I come to this church, Open Arms Community Church. I'll say it out loud on Facebook, Open Arms Community Church. You want to know what love is? Come on, we'll show you. Welcome home. Welcome home. home. (laughs) Uh, I got on my knees at this altar. And I I was going through a lot that I didn't understand. I didn't understand why I couldn't look at Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And again, Sarge helped me Tuesday night, or last Tuesday night, that we all did that. We all put those stripes on him. But I don't want to put no more on him. I don't want to put any more for what he's done for me. He's done more than enough. More than enough. But the love I have for my beloved. I've never loved her like I do now in 36 years. 
I never knew what love was growing up. But man, I do now. And when I was at this altar praying the other night, I, I confessed to Pastor. I had wings wrapped around me. I could see the tips of the feathers. And I've had them every, every day since then. I, I mean, all day today, it felt like they were on my back. I said, praise God, I've got my wings. I'm going home. I'm going home. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I just can't say enough for Holy Spirit. I mean, it's, I'm like Sherry. I'm, I'm just jumping at the, ooh, I'm about to jump out of my shoes, girl. Take off. <laughs> But if you don't know the love of God, get up here at this altar. Let us pray with you. Because I'm telling you what, you'll know love before you leave here. Amen. I promise you that. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. <laughs> Thank you with all my heart. We're one. hold on to this table okay so you know he was talking about love that's what moved me to come up here love is an action and God is clearing his word if someone has doesn't you know there's something going on in me that I don't like so I want to say to Debbie Debbie I apologize if I was rude to you and I was rude and I apologize for that I really don't want anything I don't care what it is between me and Holy Spirit, okay? And I don't care what it is, pride. I don't care what it is, anything. I don't care what it is. And basically, that was all I wanted to say. Love is more of an action, and he calls us to love. And, you know, he don't call us to be prideful. Just like Pastor said, pride goeth before fall and a haughty look before destruction. Forget that. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It just gets gooder and gooder. Amen. <laughs> then there are those that just wait for those awkward moments, right? Come on, beloved Laura. going to reset my time. I'm Laura, and if you don't know, I sit over there with my parents, Howard and Charlotte, every Sunday. <laughs> Hi. When I was, I don't know, 15, 16, I was in youth group at Springfield Baptist, and mom and dad would have been 35, 37 at the time, and they were going through a program um, in leadership called Master Life, and it was intense. Um, some of you all may have seen Daddy when he gets real thinking. He gets starts he do he does the Barney Fife thing, and um, uh, this one had him pulling his hair out because it was memorization and. I think they had to um, interview people and do all this, these really intense things. And it was a long, like a six months course. And one Sunday afternoon when they had their binders out, they were interviewing me. <laughs> they were practicing. And they asked, do you know what it is to be saved and how to be saved? And I said, well, of course. I mean, I, they drug me to church from, you know, week three nights a week, Sunday night, you know, youth and all that. And I said, well, of course. You go to church, you be really, really good, and you do good things, and you try not to be bad, and both of their faces just, you could just see that in their household that they were running that their teenage daughter that was in youth group and doing all the things had no clue. And I wanted to bring that up because everyone in here has talked about what Holy Spirit 
does for them and how how they feel with that relationship when the vast majority of people, the religious people that you were talking about, it is all about just going to church and being good and not doing bad things and not breaking the law. But that's not it. Those things aren't the necessary things. It is the relationship. And I think everyone in this room knows, but if someone is on Facebook and they're listening and they are wondering, but I'm a good person, I take meals to the shut-ins, I do this for this person, and I, you know, pick groceries up for this person, those are wonderful. But that's not what gets you to heaven. A relationship with Lord Jesus Christ you ask him into your heart and he becomes your best friend you don't ever have to lean on anyone else that is who supports you yes it's wonderful to be married to a supportive spouse it's wonderful to have a best friend that is your support but if you don't have God that person will fail you it's inevitable and you will fail them The only thing that will not ever fail you is that relationship with God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. They're all the same. They're one. And you get them all in this wonderful package deal. So if you are wondering what it is all about, you see any of these people, most of us are on Facebook, send us a message. Ask. Show up here. We aren't scary. You'll be invited in. Come as you are. And that's something else that um, I had someone say, you know, you knew the things I'd done. You, you know, I'm not, won't be accepted. I've got to get my life together before I can go to church. No, you don't. This is where you get it together. You will never have it together well enough. So just remember God loves you beyond all comprehension. He died for you, and there's nothing that he will not stand in the gap for you. Thank you. Hey, church. I hadn't planned to do this, be up here, but um, I got confirmation after Aaron spoke and then certainly when Miss Carrie came up. Um, my heart's still aching here, girl. But the reason I came into church tonight just really solemn, and I'll tell you why. Since uh, Friday night, it was a big ordeal because of what we were doing. But I've got a 20-year-old mind most of the time, but I'm in the 71-year-old body. (laughs) And sometimes when you do a lot, it's just uh, you pay for it. But I don't miss a service because I get my cup gets empty. Thank goodness for Facebook and the live messages. So I don't miss anything. But the reason why I'm standing here was uh, to... Today, because I play constantly all of the reading the Bible, testimonies, um, just constantly. Today I had a dream with I was with Christ. And uh, it was the most beautiful dream. I didn't want to wake up. I didn't want to be here. But let me tell you about how I know it was because uh, I stated as I had said to people before that God has given us a mansion. And I said, I don't want a mansion. I've been alone, living alone for all my life. I don't want to be in no building. I want to be following Jesus. I want to be at the footsteps of our God. But today the dream, I've always had this little dream of having a, a house with It was real beautiful, pale yellow with white trim. (laughs) In my dream, I was in this, 
house, a little yellow with a little white trim, and I was there with my Lord Jesus Christ, but I wouldn't leave his feet. I just constantly was laying down sideways at his feet. It was the most peaceful. I wish I could describe to you how I felt in my dream. If it's anything like uh, I've heard heaven's going to be, I could go right now. But I was in that little yellow house with a white trim with Jesus Christ. And there was a lot of other people that I didn't, I didn't know. But you know, in Acts, I had to write this down. It says in Acts 2.17, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your young sons, daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. I guess I'm in that category. <laughs> Your young men will see visions. The reason why I work so hard on God's hand ministry is for the simple reason of all the testimonies you hear up here. When are we going to stop this? When are we going to start taking responsibility and quit talking about it? We had a great opportunity Friday night to bring in an enormous amount of money so that people that are in jails or in other churches could learn that there's a God out there that loves them no matter what they've done. No matter what they've done. We have these recovery classes so folks who have taken the wrong path, selling drugs, taking drugs, have a place to go to that's that's not judged. They can sit with other men or other women that's been through the same thing. I had no father, abandoned, no food. You think it's a, a, a grown woman at 71 years old? Let me tell you, I lived all my life feeling like I was a piece of trash. Why do you want any child feeling like that? That's why I've spent as much time as I possibly can and develop a program here at church, for children's church, for these children to know about the God that loves them despite what goes on in their homes. Amen. Carrie, you need this church. You need every person in here constantly showing you the love and support that you need, and those children need to see it as well. They need to see that despite what has gone on in their home, that there's still somebody that loves them dearly, and they're accepted. They're not going to feel like a piece of trash or that I'm not good enough. I don't have a daddy. This world, especially children and children, in school can be mean. I can't play with you. You don't have a daddy. I can't date you because your dad's an alcoholic. You think because these little ones are little, they don't know what's going on? Well, then tell me that because I knew what was going on when I was five years old. And I carried it through my whole life. Come on, church. We need to step up and make a change. Let's have these benefits to raise money to make a change, not only in our church, but other churches and outside. Amen. Let's, be that church. Let's be that church. And I'm out of time. Ah. <laughs> uh. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. We got a, we got a couple songs. Uh, it's time to do work, right? It's time to do work. What I mean by that, in these next couple moments, God's giving you an opportunity to take what you got, what you're offering, right? Go like this. Hand, put your hand out. Amen. See, there's some of you right now that's like, Father, I'm going to give you my all. There's some of you that you actually have your children in your hand. There's some of you that have your marriages in your hand. There's some of you that have your finances in your hand going.
this is very important that I want to encourage you in. That when you come with this offering, Father God Almighty says, leave it at the altar. Amen. Leave it at the altar. As I look around, there's some of you that actually, you're just doing this with nothing in your hand. To me, that's sad. And glory be to God, this is what I'm going to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But get up on your feet. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say a, a prayer over you. Um, actually, Holy Spirit said my beloved wife is going to say a prayer over you. And uh, I encourage you, come to this altar. Father God Almighty wants to bless you. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for Lord Jesus Christ. For you changed everything. <laughs> We're here today sharing our testimonies just to say everything that you have done. Everything that you have done for us. You gave us the Father. And you gave us Lord Jesus. And you gave us Holy Spirit. And we thank you so much for it. Hallelujah. What you have done, what you have overcome, blessed each and every one here just to come and, and to tell us what you have done in their lives. And, Father, it doesn't stop here. It gets gooder and gooder. You never stop drawing us to it. You never stop blessing us. You never stop showering us with your love. All you ask is that we come. So, Father God, we come today and give you our all. In Jesus' name, amen.